I don't know oh, where to begin. Hello everyone and welcome to another edition, another episode of the Other People Show. It's Friday, February 16th, 10.39 p.m. on this Friday, like I just said. You're listening on 92.5 WLSD The Vault, WLSDRadio.com. You can also check out all of our social media pages. That's the Facebook, YouTube, Spotify, TikTok, or Instagram, The Other People Show. And please check out The Dark Place, streaming on WAXM.com on demand. Yes, a couple of good weeks in a row. I hope you all are having a good night. I think it's starting to rain, maybe snow a little. I don't know. It was raining a little bit when I came in. And I do know the temperature is supposed to drop. And I do know that after tomorrow, there's going to be a couple of days where it's going to be nice outside once again. And that's what we're wanting and hoping because we don't want it to be cold and rainy and dreary and icy and cold and windy. I don't. So I would imagine you all don't either. Some people do like the cold weather. I'm not, you know, I, I, I always did like the, the fashion you know, winter or fall wardrobes. You could have some cool things to wear, some cool shoes, jacket, you know, cool items like that, which, you know, in summer, I guess, you know, I guess you could as well. But in the summer, basically, I'm wearing shorts and shirt and flip-flops most of the summer. Most of the time that you see me out, I will have on probably, I would say a V-neck, t-shirt although I don't have a, on a v-neck now I have on an inside out blue shirt it's inside out that's how I roll but it's an inside out blue shirt but typically I would wear you know a shirt v-neck black uh I think they were adidas uh shorts and flip-flops is how I would roll and it's how I do roll and how I will roll this summer but we are the other people show. We meaning me. There is some interesting guest though that messaged me a couple of days ago. They're interested in jumping on board and becoming a alternate host. Uh, meaning they said they could probably do one time a month, which would be great. That means 12 times a month. Uh, not a month, 12 times a year. There'll be someone in here with me. Because it isn't easy sitting in here all the time, doing a show, sweating, sweating. Now tonight, I, I really did think about what I wanted to do for the show and things I wanted to talk about. Because there has been a couple of things that's went on in the news lately. Anything from... Um, you know, this Taylor Swift, you know, we had the Super Bowl last week that happened, the what, last Sunday, I guess. So we had the Kansas City Chiefs. They, uh, they, they defeated the San Francisco 49ers. I told you my little story about watching the 49ers and the, the Bengals when I was a kid. Now, I didn't watch the Super Bowl, but within the last uh, probably 10 minutes of the fourth quarter, I was keeping track of it uh, through my iPhone on the um, World Wide Web, the interweb. So I was doing, it's the, uh, the web all over, that's, that's what the interweb is. It's the web everywhere. It's the internet all over. And you can look up things. Did you know this? <laughs> you can look up things. And you can continuously get up to date Things uh, such as sports, or you know, uh, news, or uh, you know, stocks and bonds and things of this nature. But I was checking up on this, the 49ers and the Chiefs game. I honestly could care less who won. I don't really know much about either team. 
I know when I was younger, we drove through Kansas City, and it was a lovely city from what I remember. Uh, other than that, I don't have a tie to any one of them. When I used to play Tecmo Super Bowl, Kansas City was a pretty good team to have because you would have uh, Christian Okoye and Steve DeBerg as the, the, the quarterback. DeBerg might have been left-handed, I, I can't recall, but you have Christian Okoye as the running back, and that's the only ties that I have to um, the Kansas City Chiefs. So a lot of people didn't like them because of the Taylor Swift thing. Now, I will say this. I don't know how old Taylor Swift is. Maybe early 30s. Now, she's living her best life. I can't fault her for that. She's a top-selling uh, female or, or male artist. She's a, a, an amazing selling artist. And I don't dislike Taylor Swift at all. But I don't understand why she's the one that everyone clamors to. Not that she's bad. I just don't understand. I mean, I type in look into YouTube and Taylor Swift, look what you made me do pops up. You know what I mean? Like, why why does she have the music industry by the the horns, I guess you could say. I, I'm not sure. Like for example, let's let's see this one. You know, I really think that's actually Taylor Swift's best song that I've heard. Look what you made me do. It's it's kind of clever in the lyrical delivery. It's got a, a cool beat. It's kind of memorable. And then it's got an up-tempo um, chorus line. And uh, it's kind of like this little uh, game, lyrical game that she's playing with this person. Is it that she writes about all of her ex-boyfriends? I mean, that's... I don't know. I'm not sure what it is about Taylor Swift that has captured everyone's heart. I like her. I don't have a problem with her. But, you know, do I own any albums? No. Do I seek her music out? Uh, well, I did just now for the show. And I think I've actually seeking this uh, song out before when it came out a couple years back. But But why? I'm not really sure. And you know, you got Kanye also. He's released an album album this week. Uh, I think it's called like Vultures, maybe Vultures Volume One, something like that. I think, and it it, it went to like number one on the on the album again. On the uh, let's see if we got because there was a beef. If you remember, yeah, uh, yeah, Vultures One. It was removed from Apple Music. Uh, and then there was like some problems with, with Donna Summer not wanting him to sample the music, with Ozzy not wanting him to sample their music, but his album was still number one for the for the week, and uh, he's he's one of the best selling artists with 160 million records sold. So, but Taylor Swift, you know, she sold even more records than that, but she continues. I mean, if she's in her in her early 30s. Typically artists will peak 
in their in their late twenties, early thirties, and then you know kind of decline after that. You know, look at Justin Timberlake, although he had a, a new song come out a few weeks ago. But you know, you have a lot of those kind of artists peak in their in their late twenties, early thirties, and then they'll continue to have a career, of course, and they'll continue to sell millions and millions of downloads and albums and such like that. But they're not going to be what they were at the peak. No one can stay at the top like that forever. But Taylor Swift has continued to continuously stay at the top. And I'm just wondering how she has done that. I mean, I'm really... is, is it, I mean, I don't know. I cannot fully... I'm... I'm I mean, her. She had a. She had an album, a, a a movie, with her tour this past summer. And that movie made like three hundred million dollars globally. I mean, she has sold forty six point six million albums in the, in the United States and seven in the United Kingdom. I mean, you go by, you got like her first album, seven million in America. I'm, I'm talking about American figures here. Uh, her first album debuted at number five, seven million sold. Fearless, her second album debuts at number one, ten million sold. Speak Now debuts at number one, six million sold. Red debut at number one, seven million sold. 1989 release uh, debut at number one, nine million sold. Reputation uh, debut at number one, three million sold. Lover debut at number one, three million sold. Folklore uh, debut at number one, two. Evermore and. Uh, a million, Midnight's, two million, and then uh, the Tortured Poets Department is uh, another one coming out uh, very soon. It's coming out April twenty, April 19th, 2024. So yeah, she has basically, I mean, she started to go down a little bit, but you have to think a lot of those albums early on, like the, you know, 1989 and 2014, you know, there was still CD, DVD, LP, digital download, streaming. All, all of those. So that was when st CDs were still a big thing and more albums were sold. You know, she had 2017. It went down uh, 6 million. However, I bet her download and digital and all that is, uh, you know, high up again. But yeah, Taylor Swift, a little bit of an enigma. Because I'm not really in, immersed in that kind of world. I, you know, I don't know. I don't think it's where I've grown up, even though part of it is me growing up some. But your tastes do change a little as you grow up and mature, I guess. But I never re was really into that. I mean, I guess I was into maybe the pop music of the... Yeah, I don't know. Maybe, maybe you know, I always thought alternative, pop rock, you know... I enjoyed, I never was like, you know, did I, did I own Britney Spears, you know, albums? I think I had two of them, but at the time I thought, you know, it felt at the time with, with DVDs as well. When things came out, I, I did have the urge to, to get new things that I enjoyed and that I felt like I was supposed to get, I was supposed to want this. And you know, as I as I've gotten older, and you know, and streaming is available and all those such things, um, it's made me less likely to want to go out and get something right away because I have it, or I'm more, I guess, also more picky uh, and choosy of how I spend my time because time is the most valuable thing that we have, and we can never get that back. So I always try to enjoy or make the best use out of the time that I have at all possible. Um, so I guess listening to a Taylor Swift song tonight would be that, I guess. 
Look what you made me do, Taylor. That her her best song. I would I would argue that's her best song. I mean, I know a few of them. Uh, you know, love story that the those, but uh, yeah. Why? I don't know. I I do not know the the huge appeal. Um, and I'm not even putting her down for that because it's a it's a feat and a, an accomplishment, but uh, a little bit of an enigma, of you know why her? I mean she's outsold, you know a lot of the a lot of the greats, you know like more, I don't know like total, but within a couple of albums because she is continuously, you know she came out in 2006, and now it's 2024. So you have to think, Taylor Swift has been out for 18 years. How old is she? I mean, how old is Taylor Swift? Has she been out 18 years? Let's see how old she is. Because I don't... Maybe she's older than I think she is. But I guess she, I guess she could have honestly came out when she was about 18 or so and be like maybe 32 now. Let's find out how old Taylor Swift is. Because I really don't know. Let's see, let's see. Taylor Swift is 34 years old. So that means she's been making albums since 2004 to present, years active. So 20 years. So she's been making albums since about 14 years old, it seems like. Seems like. Who knows? Wow. But anyway... That's all I'm going to speak about her. You know, she came up on the show maybe 10 years ago when uh, Kanye... No, actually, it was longer than that. It was whenever she won, and then Kanye came up, interrupted her little Grammy speech, out saying, you know, Beyonce deserved the award, this and this and this. Even if you go to Beyonce's album sales, they don't rival Taylor Swift. Even Kanye's don't. You would have to get... You would have to be like... You know, you've got to be up there with like Taylor Swift has a as a more accurate and stable uh, and uh, you know track record than Michael Jackson. You know, probably back when you know the Backstreet Boys, In Sync, they did they both had like a three album run that you know each were debuting with. One million dollar, I mean, one million albums in sales, time and time again. It was like NSYNC did it. NSYNC sold seven hundred thousand. Backstreet sold eight hundred eighty-one thousand. Week one, I'm talking about. <laughs> Backstreet sold one point one. In Street, NSYNC sold one point two. Britney Spears sells eight hundred nine thousand. It, it was just a constant like that with the album sales back that back then, and that was you know late nineties, early two thousands. And here Taylor Swift is doing that in addition to, well, considering everything that has changed within the music industry, and she is still selling those type of records because you don't even have those kind of stores anymore. I mean, Best Buys, you don't have as many of those. A lot of those don't even sell CDs anymore. Most don't. And you had, you know, um, a Circuit City. You had, uh, there was this... I can't remember what it's called now. It's it's going to it's I just can't th think of the name of it. But there was a, a place that I used to go. It was in Reston, uh, Virginia, Reston, and it had like movies and books and and CDs, and you could probably get records and those type of things in there. And it was a huge store, and each store, especially this one. Uh, they they had to file for uh, bankruptcy back in like 2005 or six, maybe even 2007. <coughs> Excuse me. But it was a place where you could go, and if you were a lover of those things, it was like a not even a scavenger hunt because you know that would imply that you know things weren't organized or you know uh, categorized properly, and they were. But their their catalog of of titles both movie and music, even even books of movie and music related, uh, you know, autobiographies, biographies, uh, you know, charts, things like that, history of, um, 
and it would have a lot of little uh, figures and, and trinkets that would be, you know, I guess I guess you would see them maybe now. You would see them in, um, you know, it wouldn't even be like the little bobblehead things or, or the little uh, the little figures that people get now, but it would be like actual figures. You know, like an actual figure that you would not, like I got um, some figures from Kill Bill Volume 1 and 2, like the Crazy 88, uh, Beatrix, uh, you know, Bill, several of those there at the store. And, you know, they were never taken out of the, never taken out of the case or anything like that. So they're still like that. But it would be those kind of things are like uh, Adam Sandler as little Nicky uh, with his big blue uh, puffy coat laying and sleeping on the radiator because he's used to hell and earth is a little cold. So it's like those little figures. Little figures, I don't think they were mass produced a, a lot of. And I have random ones as well. Even like, uh, I'm trying to, I'm trying, I think I have an Austin Powers one as well. But a lot of the late 90s, early 2000s, uh, Tower Records was the name of the place. Tower Records. And it was a fantastic, fantastic place for, for lovers of music, uh, movies, and, and books that were related to these type things. So, yeah, that closed down. Made me sad. But I was going, this is a little bit of an, uh, a story that might go along with it before we close tonight. Um, this Tower Records was going out of business. Uh, they, were, they were shutting them down across the country. So all the product must go. So they were doing, you know, 20% off everything, then 30% off, then 40, then 50. So when it got to like 50, 60, 70% off, I was going through all the DVDs that they had. A lot of the albums, because you have to think, my car at the time, which was a Ford Focus hatchback, had a had a CD player. So that's you know it was a it was a 2003 Ford Focus hatchback, and this was probably 2006 2007. So I've got the CD player and I've got the XM radio in there as well, but I'm looking for all these albums, you know. Well, you know, maybe I'm not the biggest, uh, you know, Linkin Park fan. I like Linkin Park. I don't have a problem with them. But I'm not a big enough fan at the time to buy multiple albums. I could just, uh, you know, download some songs and burn it onto a CD at that point. But let me get Minutes to Midnight for, you know, five bucks. So it was. I was able to get some of the albums that, you know, because at the time you have to think you could listen to music online. You could do that, but in the early stages of that, um, especially with when you if you got a CD, you didn't know unless you went to like a listener party or listened to the songs online. YouTube wasn't, you know, I think it was out then, but it wasn't what it was now. And now you can virtually listen to anything at any time, but you would get burned, or or I would personally feel burned. A lot of times when I would buy albums and, you know, if they've got 12 songs on there and there were eight songs that weren't good, that would, that would always bum me out. One time I bought a Sugar Ray album and, uh, you know, Sugar Ray, if you, you would probably know Sugar Ray, but their, their second album, they were more of a ska band and we were used to songs like, you know, Every morning and fly and when it's over and songs like this. But when you had songs that weren't in the vein of those, which was the rest of the album, I think it was called like 1459, referencing 15 minutes of fame. You've got every morning, someday, uh, and, a, and I think another hit song on there, which were, you know, fun songs. But then you've got the rest of the songs weren't even songs that I, that I had ever heard of. Nor songs that I ever really cared to hear. I did see Sugar Ray one time in, uh, in Norfolk. Norfolk. But I forget why, why I was going to that story anyway. But anyway... 
thank you for tuning in to tonight's show. It's going to be a short show tonight. Uh, I've got some stuff going on this weekend. Busy weekend going on. Next week on Real Talk, I'll be back in studio discussing Napoleon Dynamite. And afterwards, on the other people's show, I will bring you a Dynamite show that was better than tonight's show. I promise you that. But thank you for tuning in. And please go to all of our social media pages. That's the Facebook, YouTube, Spotify, TikTok, and Instagram. The Other People's Show. And thank you for listening on 92.5 WLSD, The Vault. Have a good night. I know it's not my-